Hello there ladies and gentlemen, TX141 here, also known as Paul, bringing you my final Ace in the Day gameplay for the Arcade Mode of War Thunder as of the year 2014. That's right, my next video that I intend to upload will arrive on New Year's Day 2015, and I will not be spoiling the details of that video. Therefore, you may ask what is the point of this video? Well it's twofold. Firstly, to provide a bit of closure and therefore an end of year review for the year 2014 in terms of this channel. And secondly, to outline what is to come in a brand new year which we're about to enter. So starting off with the review. This has been an absolutely incredible year for the channel thanks to the fact we've gone from roughly 70 subscribers at the start of January, if not less, all the way up to 780. And I say we because it could not be possible without you guys and girls tuning in every week, recommending this channel to your friends, and additionally just providing general support, likes and comments which is absolutely wonderful and gives me further encouragement to keep on going when the going gets tough. Although yet, I haven't lost my encouragement despite a number of illnesses confronting me and some personal issues also afflicting me as well. Yet I've already digressed. It's been wonderful to be able to run items such as the Arcade Ace in a Day competition, to bring the live videos as well which was something which came out of you guys and girls asking, not me, I did not go ahead and do that on my own initiative, I was requested to do some live videos and I found absolute enjoyment in doing the first one and carrying it through. So as a result really I'd just like to quickly say thank you to all of you thus far and as a result I would like to set the target of reaching 1000 subscribers by the end of 2015. Sounds like a small target, but we start off somewhere and we'll go very far hopefully. I never like to set my targets too high because you never know where you'll take them in the end. Secondly, in terms of the end of year review, I've had a number of requests recently to outline where I stand in each of the individual nation tech trees, not just in terms of the aircraft but also in terms of the ground forces. And so there are going to be a number of slides now with some commentary over them outlining where I stand in each of the given tech trees for each nation. So starting off with the American ground forces, as you can see on your screen right now I've made no inroads whatsoever into the tech tree. The reason being I have not really played much ground forces within the last three months. I spent the majority of my time researching planes and bringing reviews instead and also running the arcade ace in a day competition. As of the start of 2015 I intend to roll around to going into the ground forces a little bit more following my completion of the F-82E Twin Mustang review, simply because I want to prioritise all my energy into the review first before considering any other outlets. Now let us move on to the American aircraft. So as you all can hopefully see on screen right now, I've made very strong inroads into the fourth tier of the American aircraft tech tree. I've yet to research the F7F-1 Tiger Cat, that is currently underway. In the meantime I will be focusing all of my upgrades around the F82E Twin Mustang, using the research bonus given when you unlock an entire tier of upgrades to speed up the work on the F7F, and then doing the same with the F7F's upgrades and the F8F-1B Bearcat's upgrades, because I've yet to actually get any upgrades for the Bearcat, I must say, the second one that is, in order to unlock the F2H-2 and the P-80A. Those are the first two American jet fighter aircraft, the right hand side being the Grumman line and the left hand side being the Pursuit Fighter line. And then I will really just push down into the jet aircraft pushing onwards towards the Panther and what I believe are the later shooting stars and then the Sabres. So let us move on to the German ground forces. So for those of you wondering where I spent all my time when the ground forces were initially released, here is your answer ladies and gentlemen, it was with the German tanks, excuse me. I'm currently in the third tier of tanks, trying to unlock my Stug 3 Aus G, and once I've unlocked my third Stug, I'll be well on my way to going towards the later Panther variants and also the Tiger 2 series tanks. The reason for my focus on the German tank tech tree is something which I will come onto in the near future, but to give you a quick reason if anything, See, because I like the open range and I like to be able to snipe tanks from a distance rather than go brawling in say a Josef Stalin 2. Nonetheless, let us move on to the German aircraft. So realistically, the German Luftwaffe tech tree is the one which I've made the most inroads into. As you can see on your screen right now, I'm currently in the fifth tier of aircraft, i.e. the Jet Age, having already unlocked my ME-163B Comet and currently working on unlocking the Heinkel 162A2 Salamander. 
My intention is then to move on to the Horton Ho 229V3 before progressing down the ME262 branch. The German Tech Tree is the one with a huge number of aircraft, but the one which I most enjoy simply because the energy fighter style and also the planes being geared towards higher altitudes as you progress into tier 3, if not tier 4. Yet I digress on the purpose of this screenshot. Additionally to note, I have unlocked but yet to purchase the majority of the Junkers 87 aircraft such as the D5 there and the G1 and G2, and I have yet to purchase the Henschel 129B series aircraft, yet I will do so in the near future and start to upgrade them for review. The plane which I am focusing on upgrading in particular right now in the Germans is the TA-152H1, simply because it is a plane which actually personifies me as a person quite well I think, and it is a plane which I thoroughly enjoy in War Thunder when the going gets good. Nonetheless, I digress from the purpose of this screenshot, and let us move on to the Russian tanks. Oddly enough, all my progress made with the Soviet ground forces has been thanks to the T-3457 Mod 1943 Premium Tank at Tier 3, which I unlocked as part of one of the special events on the War Thunder server a few months back. This tank has allowed me to grind out the whole of Tier 1, and additionally Tier 2, or to the most part, bar the T-34-1942, the T-80, and the SU-76M. Yet, once I've researched the SU-76M and the T-34-1942, I should have enough tanks to push towards Tier 3, and start to head towards the T-34-85 series tanks, and then onwards towards the T-44 and T-54s, which are the tanks which I am most interested in with the Soviet lineup. Although then again, let us not forget the Josef Stalin too. Nonetheless, I'm more interested in the German Panzer units rather than the Soviet tanks, and so there'll be very little progress in the Soviet tech tree in the near future for now. My focus will be on the other ground forces, the American and the Germans, for the time being. But that is just my preference, and if some of you feel very strongly and would like to see some tanks in action, feel free to leave a comment in the comments section below to tell me what you would like to see. Hence, now looking at the Soviet Air Forces, you can see that I've partially made my way into the Tier 4 props. However, I've still got a lot of research to do in the form of the LA-7B20, the LA-9, the I-185M71, and the Yak-9UT. But let us not forget also the IL-10s. My progress with Soviet aircraft is quite constricted, simply because I want to review certain planes in order. In particular, now that we have the original Yak-9 at a battle rate in a 3.3 in Tier 2, I want to be sure to review that before I review, say, the Yak-9U, P and UT variants. That way to provide a little bit of historical continuity, rather than jump about all over the ages with the different variants of aircraft. However, I have recently spent some time flying the LA-7, and I am really enjoying the aircraft not just in terms of upgrading it and also researching out the LA-7B20, I also find it as a plane much different from the LA-5FN. Nonetheless, we will come back to that when I eventually review the plane, but that is some time off for now. We hereby come onto the British RAF, and as you can see, I've almost finished off the whole of my research for the fourth tier, just finished off my work on the Tempest Mark II, and then I need to finish off the Griffin Spitfires, of which there are three left to do, the Mark 18, the Mark 22, and the Mark 24 and then I need to research the Mosquito Fighter Bomber Mark 16. I have got access to the Meteor F Mark III for research now in the 5th tier, I the Jet Age, yet unless there are any specific requests out there, I am going to hold off on this for the time being, seeing as I have already entered the Jet Age on the German Luftwaffe, and I am in no rush to fly a Meteor, I am more interested in flying either the ME163B Comet, or an ME262. Ergo, we finally come onto the Japanese tech tree, and the one which I personally feel I've really undervalued and not spent enough time with, as despite my research with the A6M5 Otsu almost being complete, and therefore meaning I only need to research the Kali 43 Mark III Otsu in the near future to get through to the fourth tier, I do have the feeling as though, being the tech tree that has been the most requested by you guys and girls, the viewers, it is one which I've not really focused on by comparison with, say, my British or German counterparts and so I will draw my attentions into these planes, especially towards the end of January. Nonetheless, with all that being said, let us now get into our gameplay for today. Therefore, the gameplay I have here today is taken from the ground strike map Pacific Hidden Base. I am flying out in my Hawker Tempest Mark V, a personal favourite of mine, to the following setup. 
stealth ammunition for my 20mm cannons, a 300m gun convergence and a 30 minute fuel load. I have reviewed this aircraft and for those who are interested but have not yet seen the review, you may do so using the link in the top right corner of your screen as displayed now. So, what is the reason for this gameplay other than to act as a backdrop for discussing the future items to come on this channel? Well, this gameplay is the first Ace in a Day gameplay I managed to achieve following being off from the game due to illness for over a week. And as a result this gameplay exposes me when, I'm, when I am out of my element, out of touch and out of sync. Quite a poor tricolon there, but nonetheless. I try to use the Tempest Mark V in this game in terms of an energetic smash and grab style role. Boom and zoom in the targets on the enemy team that are exposed or forcing them into uncomfortable situations whereby I can achieve not just say one but two or more kills in very quick succession. And hopefully I pulled it off with significant aplomb as you're about to see. Nonetheless, let us get onto the crux of this video. So what is to come in the near future? Well, first things first, I will be releasing Ground Forces gameplays once a week, or if not more when the time is available, as of next week. The reason being, I have neglected Ground Forces to a major extent, following its release in one of the earlier patches, i.e. well before 1.43. Now this is technically not because of my loathing for ground forces or anything along those lines. I find the ground forces highly enjoyable and even in arcade mode very realistic by comparison with perhaps world of tanks, simply because you've mitigated the health bars for module damage instead. Yet this is not a criticism of the two games, this is just a comparison. The reason why I've held off from playing the ground forces is due to the hype associated with them when they initially came out and I said this to a couple of people who have asked privately in game and also via YouTube. I wanted to avoid being lured into the hype of oh look a brand new game mode let us play that to death. Instead I wanted to leave it for a couple of months or a few months in this case wait until the overall hype has dissipated by the arrival of the American tanks and then start to bring out the gameplays as a result. And so as I have just previously said in the very near future, expect to see a lot more Ground Forces gameplays, not just from the German perspective, but also from the Russian and the American tanks. Moving on, one of the items that stemmed out of the Arcade Ace in a Day competition was the idea of Subscriber Spotlight. This is going to be a weekly series I am going to run as of the start of next week, so feel free to start submitting replays now, and they must be replays by the way, to the following classification. If it is from Arcade, it needs to be an ace in a day or greater, i.e. a kill sheet of 5 for 0 or more, and you can use any aircraft, even a bomber if you so desire. The idea is I'll take a look at the game, and if I decide to put it up on the channel, I will talk about the gameplay in terms of the tactics you used, the playstyle you've employed, the strengths and weaknesses, thereby providing my feedback on your overall play, and also allowing me to gain an insight into not how, say, the competition in the skies flies, but also into things that I have learnt or perhaps things that I can glean from the video in terms of the performance of the aircraft you have chosen and your overall style of play. We all get better somehow and it will be a very useful tool I think for both myself, you the player and also the viewers, I, you guys as well, to get more and more out of this channel in terms of tutorial style techniques. Moreover, after mincing my T's in that overall sentence there, I'm also going to be adding another thing called subscriber session, although that is a bit of a uh, gimmicky name to speak. As some of you may be aware, you have requested to play a number of times, and I have had to say no in the majority of cases. Now this is poor timing on my part, seeing as I have to usually render, edit, commentate over videos on a, not a daily basis, but say on a once, a once every two days basis. And as a result this leaves me very little time to prepare reviews, get the commentaries done and rinse and repeat. Well, from now on it will mostly be a Friday evening, Greenwich Mean Time, sometime around 8 o'clock through to say 10.30 or something along those, those times in the evening. I intend to run a subscriber session, so the idea will be I will be on at that time and I will be on specifically to play with you guys and girls, nothing else, not to review aircraft, only to play and also perhaps to record the session and put it up, so the idea would be of course a subscriber session. Now in doing so, as I refer to this mosquito fighter bomber here, something which I regret doing because it's a fellow British aircraft, 
The intention of this is also to allow me to interact with you all a little bit more, but also that way just to provide a more chilled atmosphere when I'm not doing the reviews, live gameplay, tips videos or anything else. And if you provide permission to record it and put it up on YouTube, it'd be great to get all the reactions of everyone on say microphones either via Skype or War Thunder's internal chat system and just see what sort of craziness comes out. Nonetheless, it'll be something which I assume is going to take a little while and perhaps the first couple of sessions will be rather experimental. But to reiterate that, it will be from now on every Friday from roughly 8 o'clock to 10.30. So that will be from Friday the... hold on, what's the date today? That will be from Friday the 2nd of January 2015 onwards. And I doubt I'll record the first session, even if you'll give me the go ahead. But just send me a message in the chat whilst I'm online saying you want to squad up, and I'll definitely do so. And it can be any mode, whether it be arcade, realistic or simulator. If it is simulator, you'll have to give me a little bit of time to get my joystick set up. Nonetheless, hopefully that should provide a new avenue for the channel. Now the final item to discuss, and that is stuff outside of War Thunder. Now I'm a massive fan of War Thunder, and I never get tired of it to be honest. I do have my days where things do not go right. Speaking of things going rather poorly, shooting that Fock Wolf on 90A5 wasn't going too well, despite still getting the kill. And so some days I do play other games such as Team Fortress 2, World of Tanks, and games such as Call of Duty as well. Black Ops 2 is the one I've got, i.e. the latest version of Call of Duty that I have. And so I may be uploading some videos from those aspects in the near future. Most likely World of Tanks, seeing as I know a number of you have come over from World of Tanks or still play that game in the meantime. And, as well as adding variety to the channel, it should also provide me with a smaller outlet, or sorry, an additional outlet, for videos when I haven't always got the time to put a review together, but I'd like to get something up on the channel nonetheless. So you could say it's sort of momentary material, but I think it will go well to also expand in the sort of game base here. As whilst I'm a major proponent of War Thunder, and the fact that it is an absolutely brilliant game, I never mind a little bit of variety. And so really those are the future items to come to the channel. We've got the subscriber spotlight, the subscriber sessions every Friday, Additionally, perhaps some other gameplay from different games, most, most likely World of Tanks, and additionally, what was the other thing I said? Ground Forces gameplay, that was it. <laughs> you can all tell I'm not doing this with a script in front of me at all, it's quite handful to remember. And I believe right now, going back towards the gameplay that I have here, that I'm currently on 8 kills, and I'm not going to spoil the final kill tally, I do have it in my head right now but I know the game is gradually proceeding towards a sort of interim status at this point and a majority of the ground forces are being knocked out rather rapidly. But as you can see here the Tempest Mark V is quite a brilliant aircraft at just flying level at medium to low altitude and building up speed. The climb rate's very good as well though you have to be careful with the engine temps as it does overheat quite quickly this plane by comparison with some of the other aircraft that is battle rating the 6.0. The only other thing I wanted to say about sort of future items would be that I'm always happy to sort of do collaborations with other YouTubers no matter how big or small and really I'm always welcoming new ideas so if you have got something you'd like to suggest for the channel be sure to leave it in the comments section below because as I say I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the fact that I get the support from you guys and girls and I just love to hear other views, other opinions and also when I re release reviews and see the sort of historical items come up and disputes over whether what I've said in the history behind an aircraft is correct, people throwing different sources in saying you should view this documentary, this link here, it's absolutely brilliant. Ah, and one other thing, War Thunder Live. Now I've really enjoyed doing War Thunder Live and the 16th episode being the Battle of Britain was highly enjoyable as well. I believe my aim here on this Messerschmitt 19 G2 Trop is completely off kilter for a good portion of time until I finally get the kill. Ugh, that was terrible. And I almost get bounced by Fock Wolf on 90 A8. That was the major mistake I made there. But back to Wolf Under Live before I lose my train of thought. I'm happy to do that in collaboration with some of you. I've had some funny sessions with a couple of you guys, you know who you are, in SBD3 Dauntlesses whereby they seem to be the best dogfighters at their battle rating, more so than Messerschmitt 109 ML1s and 3s. And I'd love to reignite that sometime in the near future, seeing as it might add a little bit more vitality to what is still a rather, in my opinion, vibrant series nonetheless. 
And with nine kills in the bag now, I'm trying to break around to grab a tenth because I know the game's almost at its end. Or I'm assuming it is because the airfield's being bombed a bit. Yet here I try to clear up for my mistake on this Wolf 190 A8, and I believe I succeed in taking down the foe that could have taken me out. And this makes for my tenth kill, and what is to be my double ace, and therefore my final kill of this gameplay. In the background really you can see that there's not much else going on. The majority of our friendly planes are inhibiting the central region of the map and therefore attacking the ground units, especially our friendly Illusion 2s. I know there are a couple of enemy bombers trying to head over towards our friendly airfield if there's not a year two or over it already. But the thing with the Pacific Hidden Base map, in terms of a map perspective, it's a sort of dichotomy of overall playstyle. Sometimes you'll get a team that solely focuses on taking out the ships and the ground units, whilst the other team tries to bomb out the bases and the airfield as a whole. It's very rare you'll get two teams that try for the same incentive, as usually one team, as soon as they lose the upper hand in terms of altitude, will immediately convert into going for the ground units, whilst the other team goes for the airfields. And it's what makes Pacific Hidden Base quite an interesting map in my opinion, seeing as whilst it normally digresses into a sort of in and out chase between all the rocky caverns and that, there is always something going on above 4000 metres in, in my opinion. Here I'm just looking around for another target, and I can see the year 2 in the distance which I break after, because I know it's going to be down at an altitude similar to myself, rather than be up at a higher altitude. But as you can see here, the enemy ticket bar is about to be concluded, meaning the game's over, and we live to fight another day. Let's just take a look at some post-game stats as a result. Hence, we can see that our 10 kills managed to allow us to achieve 33,420 silver lines. On top of this, we had 2,252 research points, with a boosted 2,928 research points going towards our work on the Tempest Mark II. Whilst I was not commentating specifically over this gameplay in terms of my overall playstyle, I hope you could see there that the Tempest Mark V acts very well as an interceptor or a smash and grab style of fighter. With its high acceleration, climb rate and overall performance both on the level and in the vertical at low to medium altitude as well as extending up to high altitudes in some respects allowing you to chase down any opponent that you may face. Additionally we managed to prey on a lot of opponents who are in the midst of an engagement or trying to make their way out of or stay out of the way of a furball and that meant we could easily prey on opponents for easy kills and at the same time also minimize the risks that we took despite the fact that we put ourselves right on the firing line of an enemy Focke-Wulf 190A8 who seemed just as surprised to see us right in front of their guns as we were surprised to see them right behind us. Nonetheless, we will very shortly be taking a look at the player statistics, but I also hope that this video has acted as a good channel update for December 2014 and also a correspondence point for looking back on what has been a wonderful, exciting and enticing year and also a great foundation point for the year to come seeing as I hope to bring a lot more to this channel in the near future, and it's only with your support that I can do so and continue to do so with the same smile and dedication. We can see by comparison to the rest of our team, we came second, because we really didn't contribute too much towards the team effort. We managed to shake a couple of enemy fighters and heavy fighters off of friendly towels, but really we were in it for ourselves in this game. Not focusing particularly on the enemy bombers, despite intercepting that Wellington at the start of the game, but just trying to pick up the kills, and really it was a case of me trying to find my way back into War Thunder after being out for so long. And I really had a massive smile on my face following this game, because I really felt as though I got the old me back, and found my feet once again. Nonetheless, probably following a lot of drinking tomorrow night for some of you, you may have difficulty finding your feet. Yet I think it's going to be a quiet night in for me, or perhaps just seeing some friends. Nonetheless, thank you ladies and gentlemen for what has been a brilliant year. Thank you for everything thus far, and thank you for everything to come. I wish you all a pleasant evening, and a happy new year. Yet until next time ladies and gentlemen, take care, and good luck in the skies.